Shalom Israel. Kahala Yahal Bashi Yahal Shai. Bashim Rakak with Dash. Shalom Ahab Labayaf Shah Dawada. Double honors to the elders that are teaching the right doctrine. And salutations to you, brothers, that are pushing this word in truth and necessary. It's a Shamba Yahweh coming to you from the Church of Yahweh Shai 144 with another uh, quick video. I just want to address a preset. Uh, which the brothers in the GMS, okay, uh, camp or the GMS church have been using as a bailout card or a get out of jail card to to say that basically they don't know when the new moon is and they know their lunar Sabbath is wrong, but because they're so proud, they don't want to come out and admit it, okay? And the Lord is really going to use that to chastise a lot of you brothers because the scripture says the Lord resisteth the proud. So they're basically using uh, this precept as a get out of jail card to say, oh, even if we don't know when the new moon is, this precept covers it. And the fact that they're using that precept alone in itself is bizarre because it shows you that this knowledge that they have proclaimed to the world to have is not as chiseled as they, they, they thought it was. Because if you actually look at the precept that these brothers are using to defend their false lunar sabbath and the lunar moons that they're keeping it's very bizarre okay and that's what we're going to do we're going to put it under the microscope so the sincere brothers which watch the videos and want to learn in all humility okay can can actually get something out of this uh situation so brother kushar get me that video because a brother from gms made a comment right he made a comment on the board because really what it is is a lot of them are a lot of them are realizing that their elders have taught them a wrong doctrine. But because they got their head so far up their elders' asses, they don't want to come out at the gate and glorify Yahweh Bashim Shai, which really the Lord is gonna chastise a lot of you brothers for trying to take his glory and give it to another man. Not to say these men haven't put in work and are not worthy of double honors, but as it stands now, if they don't repent and come out of the gate and teach the correct doctrine, they're not receiving no double honors because a lot of you brothers need to understand we came from the house of David, all right, by the way, for those of you that don't know. And the reason why we don't give high priests about double honors is because he's teaching a false doctrine and he's selling breakdowns. And we thought the GMS would be right, but it seems it's not greener on the other side, okay, because they're doing the same wickedness or similar wickedness that was going on in, in the house of David, man. And we don't want to be no parts of it. If we got to lose friends for standing up for righteousness sake, so be it. We don't care about uh, the friendship of this world, man. Okay? So we're going to talk about this precept that these GMS brothers are using to say, oh, this qualifies us teaching a wrong lunar cycle, which is, they say is 29.5 days, which is nowhere in the Bible. And no one has said nothing about it, so it shows all of you niggas are just wicked, man. And I'm sick and tired of you niggas coming on the comment board, okay? You've already disrespected the Lord enough. The crescent showed up yesterday, and today is the second day of the month. You niggas were saying that the crescent, uh, the new moon was a dark moon, which showed up about four days ago. But yet the crescent showed up yesterday. Yeah? But anyway, let's deal with this preset because this is very annoying now. You know, they said they washed their hands on this case, but you could tell that their conscience is really troubling them. That's why they keep coming back because they know they fucked up. But because they're so proud, they go around rebuking all camps all day long. But let me tell you GMS brothers something. Every time you point your finger at someone, always remember four fingers are pointing right back at you. This is a proverb that we use in Ghana, okay? Always remember, when you're pointing your finger at someone, there's four fingers pointing back at you. Now, the ones of you that do repent and come out with the truth, you still have hope with your Hawa Bashimi Hawa Shai. Other than that, all the works you're doing is in vain because the Heavenly Father hates pride and he hates uh, ignorance. These are... Some of the key characteristics that made you niggas end up on the slave boats in the first place. 
Because when you read Jeremiah 15 and 3, everyone received a different judgment. Some went in captivity, some died of famine. Some got colonized by the Edomites. Uh, some people were sold as slaves. Everyone had a different type of judgment. Okay? And I believe, I strongly believe you brothers in Babylon are very, very wicked, man. You're extremely wicked. It's sickening. I don't even want to talk to you guys anymore. Because you guys make me sick. I just want to focus on the brothers that are humble and want to learn. So I'm going to put this breakdown out there, okay, in all sincerity and humility through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, so the brothers that want to learn can understand what this thing is really about. Okay, so the precept these brothers are using, where's that comment? So this is the comment that the GMS guy dropped. He said, so first he's telling me about, uh, I need to mine the way I speak in public and, you know, because the UK law is against me. And I don't even know what to say to that comment. Because here you are, your elders were rebuking ISUPK's commanding general, Yohanna, for speaking smooth words on the TV station. When he said, we don't hate white people. God hates white people. They were cursing him out all day long. And now you're trying to come and tell me I need to tone down my voice for these damn heathens. Anyway... That's just diversion tactics. Let's deal with a point. So this is uh, the GMS brother's response. Here, as you can see, 20 hours ago, it says GMS elders the milk. And really, this milk, this GMS elders milk, you're going to have to look at that milk that you brothers digested, man. Because it seems there's some contamination in that milk that they gave you. Because that, that 29.5 cycle of the moon it's not adding up because if you observe the moon the moon doesn't behave in a 29.5 cycle so that gms elders milk is contaminated and i strongly advise you brothers to humble down and study to show yourself approved because even your elders have said they can't save you from what's coming so you only have yourselves to blame because you're going around high and mighty saying you got 100 percent truth when you damn well know that you don't have 100% truth. And you've been humbled through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. And a lot of you, you just hate the Lord so much. You're under this, you're so deluded, yeah? You're under this illusion that you love the Lord. But really, the Most High has proven that you don't love Him. Because if you love the Lord as much as you said you will, you come out and admit that there's 30 days in a month. You come out and admit that the crescent is the new moon. Okay? Now, let's deal with a point. So, this is what he's saying, right? Because they, because they got um, confounded regarding the moon, now they want to focus on Esau's law and try and advise us as a body how to act on the highways and the byways. And it, it all goes back to that Matthew 7 and 1. They got a big Ross Clark beam in their eye, which is blinding them so they can't see. They don't want to remove that, but yet they want to remove the mole out of their brother's eye. Thou hypocrite. Thou hypocrite. It says, what is a section 5 public order? The offense is created by section 5. So this nigga knows the laws of Esau even better than he knows the laws of the most high. That is very, very interesting. Because if you see this coming right here, he's going into section uh, 5 public order Blase, as if we give a shit about that. If we really cared about the Section 5, do you think we'll be out there with the kind of attitude we do? We have. Okay? Right, now let's deal with the reason why this video is being made. Now, if you go further down, he quoted Colossians 2 and 16. Now, I've seen Elder Manatazak quote that same scripture. He was talking a lot of smack, yeah? And then after he said everything he had to say... He dropped Colossians 2 and 16. And that shows you he doesn't even understand the scripture. This is the same elder that was scratching his head and saying that the full moon is after the Passover. And he had to get corrected by Apostle Ramla. You see, you guys are so proud. You can't even see what the Lord is doing to you. Hmm? You're so proud. You can't even see that the Lord is bugging you out. And all you have to do is humble yourself and admit that you are wrong. But because you're so knuckle-headed. Anyway, let's go to Colossians chapter 2 verse 16, yeah? 
this is for the sincere brothers that want to learn. Because at the end of the day, we're all servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This ain't about going back and forth or taking shots at certain camps. This is about the truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai coming out. So get Colossians. This is the precept that they used to say you can't teach brothers the correct uh, moon cycles or how many days there are in a month. This is what they're using. So they're saying, even though they're wrong, you still can't correct, brothers, because Apostle Paul, who is under Yahawashai, who is under Yahweh Bashim Yahawashai, said this. And really, they don't even understand this precept. So they're still giving wrong breakdowns. That's why I said that milk is contaminated, man. Because if we actually look at this precept in detail, precept upon precept, you realize beyond any reasonable doubt that these brothers don't even understand basic precepts because Colossians 2 and 16 is a very basic scripture. Very, very basic. And the fact that they tripped up on this alone shows you they need to readdress the... They, like I said in the, the moon videos I was making a while back, you brothers need to go back to the drawing board, man. Okay, all of this pride ain't gonna get you nowhere. Because don't forget, the Lord said he's going to start the judgment in his own house first. And that's what he's doing with this moon that he's confounded you with. And the fact that you can't even see the Lord is gunning for you alone shows that you ain't got no kind of defense to what he's about to do to you. This is Colossians chapter 2 and verses 16. It says, let no man therefore judge you in meat. Now, the fact that he said meat and drink alone and you still didn't catch on. But you wanted to use this as a get out of jail card to teach a false moon doctrine shows how insane you brothers are turning, man. And it's all because of that pride. The Lord is resisting you because you're prideful. Colossians 2 and 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So this is what they used to say. Oh. Even though our 29.5 lunar Sabbaths and our uh, lunar phases are wrong, you still can't judge us anyway because Apostle Paul said this. But they keep forgetting what Apostle Paul said in the latter verses, okay? Because if you go further down, what does it say? It says, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. What does that mean? Here is where we get the understanding. Because this verse right here destroys that whole fable of you can't correct brothers concerning the new moon. Because they don't even understand that the reason why Apostle Paul said that was because why? Galatians chapter 3 and verses 23. Get me Galatians 3 and 23, Baba Kishar. Let's get why Apostle Paul said that. Because he was speaking to people that were used to being corrected concerning the law. Because we had high holy days and we had new moon days which required certain rituals to be done. And I'm going to go into that. But before I even touch that, let's get Galatians 3.23. It says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, verse 24, it says, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. What does a schoolmaster do? Every time you get a question wrong, he smacks you. That's what was happening back in the ancient world. If you make a mistake, you either have a trespass offering or you get smacked. Okay? For those of you that know the precepts, go and read it, man. The stonings which happened on the Sabbath days, okay? The burnings which happened if a priest's daughter was caught being a harlot. These were the curses of the law. Because if you actually go to Galatians 3, okay? And, yeah, let's go further down. Uh, 20, uh, 25. It says what? But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So that means that the law of sacrifice is done away with. Now take us, actually, read verse 24 as well. It says, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Hamashiach Yehoshua, 
that we might be justified by faith. So keep that in mind. We are justified by faith now, not by how many burnt offerings we give on the new moon days and on the Sabbath days. That's why Paul said, don't judge any man concerning meat or drink offerings. That's what he was talking about because you still had Israelites going around saying, oh, the new moon is here. Why are you not giving your burnt offering for? Because they didn't understand that the heavenly father was doing away with the sacrifice because the heavenly father is sick and tired of them giving sacrifices and trespassing against him because we had something in Israel called a trespass offering. Okay? Trespass offerings, man. Not to talk of the new moon offerings, not to talk of the Sabbath day offerings, not to talk of the high holy day offerings. We're going to go into all of that. So you see, you brothers don't even... Un go back to Colossians uh, 2 and 16. So it, sh it shows you brothers don't even understand basic scriptures. You do not understand basic scriptures, man. So when you're reading, the scripture says in Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, with all that getting, get understanding. Okay, get understanding, man. So Colossians chapter 2 and verses 16, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which is a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Hamashiach. Why? Because you don't need to do those burnt offerings anymore. Because why? Yahweh Shai is the sacrifice. Now get me Hebrews chapter 10, Baba Kasha. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's get why Paul said, don't judge any man concerning meat offerings. Hebrews, New Testament. Hebrews chapter 10. Right. So Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 1, look at what it says. It says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come. You see that? The same wording from Colossians chapter 2 and verses 17. It says, which is a shadow of things to come. You see that? Precept upon precept, line upon line. And it's funny because they use that to say you can't judge people concerning the Sabbath days. But funnily enough, there's no precept for that one, though, when you break it down that way. So it shows you that is not a correct precept. Let's carry on. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they be offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. You see that? That is why Paul was saying, don't judge any man in meat or in drink. Offerings. Because these are a shadow of things to come. And it's going to explain when you carry on reading Hebrews 10. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Question mark. Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. Verses 3. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again of sins every year. Verses 4, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Verse 6, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure so the heavenly father gave his son as a living sacrifice man this is what paul was talking about in meat or in drink in meat or in drink because we had a sacrifice for each new moon sabbath and high holy days now with that said let's get the precept for that as well get me numbers chapter 28 and verse 11, Baba Kisha. Numbers chapter 28 and verse 11. In meat or in drink, therefore judge no man. So do not use this precept to go around and say it's okay to teach a false lunar cycle. 
Because now you're waxing worse and worse. And it's funny because you've been busy correcting everybody else. So now if, if someone can even correct you, they, they're not even going to correct you. Because you've been busy pointing fingers at everyone trying to correct everybody. So now that you're going off, it's like there's no one to even correct you anymore. Because you've been busy going around correcting everyone else. Numbers chapter 28 and verse 11. It says, and in the beginning of your months, this is the new moon, because new moon means what? New month. This is what Paul was talking about. And in the beginning of your months, you shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three tenth deals of flour for a meat offering. Did you see that? A meat offering. That's why Paul said what? Don't judge any man in meat or in drink or in respect of an high holy day or of the Sabbaths or of the new moons, which is what? In the beginning of your months. Let's carry on. It says, uh, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil. Now go to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Yeah, Leviticus 23, and I'm going to start from about the 23rd verse, yeah. That's right. So now let's deal with the in respect of an high holy day. Right, so this is Leviticus 23 and 23. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath. Okay, a memorial of blowing trumpets and holy convocation. Notice this is a high holy day, you know. This is a Sabbath as well on that high holy day because the first day of the seventh month is kept as a Sabbath. And on that day, you're meant to blow trumpets and the 25th verse, something happens as well. This is what the meat and in drink that Paul was talking about. Verses 25. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And by the way, there's another thing that we need to highlight as well. Servile work is not the same as any other ordinary type of work. Because if you go in the Hebrew, servile work is called Shabbat one. Shabbat one. Selakia. Shabbat one. And ordinary work is called what shabbat okay so when it says no servile work that sabbath where you can't do no servile work so no servile work is called shabbat one the sabbath where you're not allowed to do any kind of work whatsoever whether it be servile you're not allowed to do any work period is shabbat so get the uh, difference between the two you have shabbat and shabbat one and the elders are well aware of this. They're well aware of this, but they're not going to tell you. They tell you to look up words. So go and look it up. Go and look it up. Because in the beginning of the year, on the 14th day of the month, which is what? Uh, the Passover. You're meant to keep the first day as a Shabbat one. Not actually a Shabbat, you know. A Shabbat one. Why? Because the gap in between the next Shabbat one is five days. The first day is a Shabbat one, and on the seventh day is a Shabbat one. Between the first and the seventh day is five days. Now, a normal Sabbath, the gap is six days. So you brothers need to go and, like I said, go back to the drawing board, man. Go back to the drawing board, you know, and pray to the Lord for mercy, man. But mainly, the reason why a lot of you brothers are not getting it is because you're prideful. That's why. But anyway, let's carry on. It says, um, verse 25, You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai. This is the meat and drink that Paul was talking about, not to judge any man in. Because after Yahweh Shai came and died, we no longer have to give these burnt offerings. But you still had niggas going around because they didn't understand the death of Yahweh Shai's significance. So they were going around pointing fingers at people that weren't keeping these customs anymore, man. 
That's why Paul wrote that letter. You see, you got to understand these precepts before you go out making claims because now you're putting yourself on that table to be judged for adding onto the gospel, man. This is verse 28. And ye shall do no work in that same day. Now, Salakia, verse 26. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also, in the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Look at that. Look at that. There shall be a day of atonement. Now, the real question is, okay, if Yahweh Shai died on the cross for our trespasses, do we have to give trespass offerings to a priest to burn as a trespass offering for us anymore? Hell no. Because then we'll be taken away from the glory of the death of Yahweh Shai. This is all Paul was talking about. That's why Peter said some of Paul's letters are hard to be understood. And a lot of you got tripped up by it, man. Let's carry on. It says, also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire. So what are you atoning for, man? What are you atoning for? When Yahweh Shai has already died on the cross for you. That's why it says before faith came, we were kept under the law. This is why I took you to Galatians 3. This is all Paul was talking about. It had nothing to do with not correcting brothers concerning when the new moon comes in or concerning when to keep the Sabbath day. It had nothing to do with that. It was all talking about the burnt offerings for those specific days. That's why it began by saying in meat or in drink before it even mentioned new moon and Sabbath and all the other lot. It's not hard to be understood, but because you're not rightfully dividing the word, because you're too busy, okay, pointing fingers at other people, that's why you can't see you got four fingers pointing back at you. Because you got tunnel vision when you're rebuking people, but you keep forgetting you got a beam in your eye, which you need to remove. It says, verse 28, and ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is the day of atonement. Now go to Exodus chapter 12 and verses 3. Exodus 12. Let's get concerning the Sabbath days as well. So we're breaking down Colossians 2 and 16, okay? For those of you that have been following Colossians 2 and 16 has nothing to do with correcting people concerning the new moon and the Sabbath day. It, but it has everything to do with pointing fingers at people that don't give burnt offerings on those specific days. That's why it began by saying, judge no man in meat or in drink. This precept has never been broken down like this before. Why? Because a lot of your elders in Israel don't even know it. But because they're so proud, they don't want to come out of the gate and admit it. That's why the Lord is revealing it unto the babes. Exodus chapter 12 and verses 3. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take him every man a lamb. Okay, let's jump down to the point. Uh, verses 6. And ye shall keep it unto the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Because that's when the day begins. Uh... Let's go down to verses 16. Okay. Now here's the point concerning the Sabbath day. Because this is not a normal Sabbath. This is a Shabbat one day. It says, and in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation. No manner of work shall be done in them. Save that which every man must eat. So that is not a normal Sabbath day because normal Sabbath days, you're not even allowed to kindle fire, man. No cooking, nothing. So this is a Shabbat one. And notice it says, in the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation. No manner of work shall be done in them. Save that which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. You see that? 
And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day I have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. So you see how it, it said that Shabbat one day, you can actually cook only what you're going to eat, but you can't work for money. This is the Sabbath day that Paul was talking about that you can't judge people in. He wasn't talking about you can't correct brothers concerning when the Sabbath is. Because then you'll be breaking the commandment because Yahweh Shai said what? Well, if you love me, keep my commandments. But the burnt offerings, when it comes to that, you can't point fingers at nobody because why? Yahweh Shai came and even the score concerning the burnt offerings, man. But you have every right to correct brothers when they're keeping a wrong cycle of the moon phase or when they're keeping a wrong Sabbath. You have every right to correct them. Okay? You have every right to correct them. Get Matthew 5.17. Let's get that. And these are all scriptures that you know, but you didn't learn it the right way. So it has to be read to you again. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Right, it says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. You see, because they're saying, oh, you know, the Lord came so we don't have to keep no correct Sabbaths anymore. But it's funny, you got a Sabbath breakdown, but yet you're quoting Colossians 2.16. So you're contradicting yourself. You're telling me I can't correct you because of Colossians 2.16 puts it to bed. So why in the hell have you got a 29.5 day breakdown in the first place? Oh boy, it gets worse, doesn't it? Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no way pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so. You're teaching that, ah, look, ah, it doesn't matter anymore. Colossians 2.16, don't judge any man. It says, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments. And shall teach men so. You're teaching them now. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom. And this is what I'm doing. Go back to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16 again. Let's go over that again. So notice we've gone into the law to show you the, some of the feast days and what we used to do on them. The burnt offerings that we used to give on the Shabbat ones, okay, on the uh, the feast of uh, the blowing trumpets, okay, it has its own burnt offering as well, and you have to keep a Sabbath on that day, which is a sh uh, Shabbat one, by the way, not Shabbat, because there's two different types of Sabbaths. You have a Shabbat and a Shabbat one. The Shabbat one, you can cook. The Shabbat, you can't cook. You see? Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Why did Paul say that? Because of the burnt offerings. Because Yahweh Shai came and died. So, and the Most High said he doesn't even like those burnt offerings because they're not sincere. That's why he sent Yahweh Shai as the ultimate. So we are justified by faith in the shedding of his blood. Not in no burnt offerings for a trespass offering. That was the old covenant. We're under the new covenant now, which is the law of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, having faith. Okay, Colossians 2 and 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day because a lot of these high holy days had their own burnt offerings. That's why he began with meat or in drink. Holy day or of the new moon because the new moon had their own sacrifices or of the Sabbath days because the Sabbath days had their own sacrifices. Example, uh, the seventh month, the first day of the month, that Sabbath day 
had its own burnt offering. You see that? It's not hard to be understood. But because you're following behind men, okay, which speak uh, smooth, beguiling words. And it's funny because verse 18 says it. Verse 18, it says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Look at that. Fleshly mind, man. Because that's what's going on in Israel, man. You've got people following behind men when they should be studying to show themselves approved. This is what the Heavenly Father requires of you. Highlight verse 4 as well. It says, and this I say. You see, it's funny. Paul was saying this because he understood you're going to have people like that in Israel. That are going to come with enticing words. They're going to have a whole bunch of niggas follow them. Which is, is not, you know... It's normal with Israel because Israel are like sheep led to the slaughter anyway. Colossians 2 and 4, it says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And that's what they use. The new moon comes in when you can't see nothing, when it's blank. Now the crescent is the new moon. So which is which, man? You're saying the new moon is when it's blank. Now you're saying the new moon is when uh, <laughs> the crescent shows in. It says, let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay. But you see, it's funny because no one is even saying nothing about it. So it shows that you're just as wicked, man. And the best you can do is quote Colossians 2 and 16, which you have no understanding of. Because I'm sure by now, you're scratching your head saying, oh man, not again. And it gets even worse because this is just one of the things which you put yourself on the table for. So it's like every time you open your mouth now, the Most High is going to slap it back shut. Because the Lord is getting tired of you hypocrites in Israel, man. Colossians 2 and 4, it says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. Because why? Hamashiach Yehoshua is absent here in the flesh, but he's with us in the spirit. Uh, he said, I will send you the Holy Spirit, the Rakakodash, which will show you all things. Whatsoever I have said unto you, it shall bring it to your remembrance. Okay, this is verse 6. As ye have therefore received Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, so walk ye in him. So the fact that you're saying because of Colossians 2.16, we can't correct brothers concerning the Sabbath day or high holy days. That is absolutely bizarre because even Yahweh Shai himself, get me uh, John chapter 7, even Yahweh Shai kept the high holy days, man. Even Yahweh Shai himself kept the high holy days. So just because you don't know when the high holy days come in, because you don't know when, hey, you need the moon to call in a, a feast day, you brothers don't even know when the new moon comes in, even though we've told you time and time again, but because you're so puffed up with pride, you don't want to accept it, yeah? Even Yahweh Shai himself kept the feast days, man. So don't come and say, ah, oh, we can't correct brothers concerning the new moon, which you need a new moon to call in a feast day. So yeah, we don't have to keep that no more, yeah. When Yahweh Shai himself said, anyone who teaches the brethren shall be called great in the kingdom. John 7 and 1. After these things, Yahweh walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Uh, now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. You see that? The feast of tabernacles was at hand. And Yahweh actually went to the feast of tabernacles. Yahweh actually went to the feast of tabernacles. This is verses uh, 8. Go ye up to this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. And when he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then he went up unto the feast. You see? So yeah, how was I was keeping the feast days, man? It shows you niggas are just wicked. You're trying to drag all the brethren in the dirt with you, man. Go ye up into this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet fully come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. 
But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up onto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Why? Because the Jews were trying to kill him. You wicked niggas were trying to kill him. Yeah? Verse 14. Now about in the midst of the feast, Yahawashai went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters having never read? And this is the same thing you brothers say about us. Oh, you guys are novices. You just come in the truth. How can you... This is what Ramah said. How can one guy from West Africa come all the way to come and confound all the brothers in Great Millstone? Well, then it's a miracle then, isn't it? They said the same thing about Yahweh Shai. They said what? And the Jews marveled saying, how know if this man letters having never learned? I don't know what Bible you brothers are reading, you know. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it. I'm going to end it soon because this video seems to be dragging. Okay. I pretty much brought out most of the key precepts for you brothers. But I'm going to get one more precept concerning what Paul said. Because the Heavenly Father taketh not pleasure. Get me first Samuel chapter 15, Bible Kishore. He taketh not pleasure in your burnt offerings, man. He even said I will not smell in your solemn assemblies, man. Yeah, did not the Most High say that? That's why Paul was, this was all prophecy. The Lord, actually, before you get that, get me Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5 verse 23, Baba Kishore. Amos chapter 5 and verse 23. Yeah, get me Amos 5 and 23. Because listen to what the Heavenly Father said here. He said, take away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. Okay, verse 22, actually, Selakia, start from there. Now, start from 21, 21, Selakia, Selakia. Verse 21, yeah. Right. It says, I hate and despise your feast days. This was in Amos' time, you know, before even Paul wrote Colossians. I hate and despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Why did he say that? What are the solemn assemblies? The feast days, the high holy days, the Sabbaths. Because why? We had burnt offerings to give to the Lord. He said, I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. I don't want no burnt offerings. Verse 22. Though you offer me burnt offerings, your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. If you brothers can't get it after this, I don't know what else to say to you, man. Go to the first Samuel, uh, Baba Kishar, 15. And we'll start from the, uh, I think, 22nd verse where... Because Samuel said something very interesting to King Saul. Yeah, 1 Samuel 15. Anyway, I hope you sincere brothers are getting edified, man. I do apologize, but sometimes this thing gets very, very annoying. Okay. Um, yeah. Verses 22. And Samuel said, this is Samuel speaking to Saul, you know, after Saul broke the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. This is the same thing Paul was saying, but in a different con uh, context. He said, what? Well, Judge no man in meat or in drink. Because half the time, these guys that are giving the burnt offerings, they're hypocrites anyway. Okay? That's why the Lord said what? And Samuel said, Have the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. I remember growing up in Ghana, they always used to say, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Then you get one big slap on your face. So I know this precept very well. It says, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Verse 23. And this is for all you brothers that have rebelled against the correction of the moon cycle you're keeping, which is clearly wrong. Okay. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stop. So it shows you brothers are wizards, man. Really, that's what you are. You're doing witchcraft on the brethren, man. Because you have rebelled against Yahweh by Shimei 
And Samuel was telling you here, he said, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness. Because you brothers are so stubborn. That's why this guy came on the comment board, Colossians 2 and 16. Colossians 2 and 16. Rebelliousness, man. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. And really, that's what you brothers have done. The Lord showed us the crescent yesterday to show us that the, the new month has begun. And this was a perfect 30-day cycle before the crescent even showed up the next day. So you brothers have completely rejected the word of the Lord, man. And you're still making video upon video as if the Most High is acknowledging you. The Heavenly Father is, is I'm telling you, man. The Heavenly Father is not happy with you brothers' pride, uh, prideful behavior. And soon he's going to show you. It says, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahashai, he has also rejected thee from being king. And if a lot of you brothers don't make it, because you have high hopes, you have high expectations for Yahweh Bashem Yahashai. Oh, I want to I wanna fly in a chariot. Oh, I want to rule over heathens. Oh, I want to get Edomite concubines. Oh, I want to go to the other galaxies. Oh, I want spiritual power. I want a celestial body. I want the wisdom of the Asians. But yet you can't admit when the Lord is showing you truth. You can't glorify the Lord for opening your eyes using a vessel you despise. Then you ain't a real man of the Lord, man. I rest my case. I hope you sincere brothers were edified. Uh, double honors to the elders that are teaching the right doctrine in Israel. And uh, salutations to the brothers that are pushing this word in Jesus' name. Shalom.